Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on the afternoon of Friday, July 19th, 2024. Hope you had a good week. Unfortunately for precious metals, they did not. Started off strong, but a nasty reversal in the complex. Led not by gold, but by silver. So silver was the first to reverse. And until today, Friday, gold had actually held up pretty well. Uh, so gold was down about 1.5% on the week. Silver down 6%. GDX, GDXJ, down about 3% or so on the week. SILJ, those stocks down, I think 5% on the week. So basically what we had, we had a failed breakout in gold. Gold did break out, I think either at the end of last week or the beginning of this week. That reversed course. And when you have failed moves, you tend to get immediate sharp moves in the other direction. However, I will point out that you had the big down day today in gold, but the miners really yawned at that. I mean, they sold off early and at the open, but all the weakness was bought. Not the worst week, but a, a bad week nonetheless. So let's get into the charts. Okay, so here are the weekly candle charts for gold and silver. These moving averages are the equivalents of the 200-day moving average. And as you can see here, the weekly chart does a good job of showing the failed breakout. This comes in, I want to say, about... Let's see, just above, call it 2425, this weekly resistance. So this is going to be important going forward. You can see this is a nasty candle breakout earlier in the week, then a huge reversal. So expect at least this to come back to 2350. I would think maybe it comes back, what is this, 2325 or 2320 in this area. So it's it's back in this range. And, you know, maybe it comes down all the way to 23. It bounces again. So you could see something like that. And uh, they're going to cut rates in September. So we'll see. If the market is weak, the precious metals market, going into that first rate cut, and then you get the actual cut, then the market would probably move higher and perhaps much higher on the cut. So We'll see, but nevertheless, it looks like gold is back in this consolidation. Silver, again, silver led the move down, and that's always a bad sign because typically you see the strength in gold, and silver, it can either confirm it or, I mean, deny it. You don't usually use that word in technicals, but for lack of a better word, you could confirm it or deny it or disprove it. And so you had the breakout in gold this week, but it wasn't confirmed by silver. I, it's kind of hard to call because... But you get the breakout and then maybe the confirmation comes a couple days later or a week later. So it, it's hard to know if there's really failed confirmation. But I forget what day it was earlier this week. But you had the big down day in silver. I think, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? That was really a sign the breakout in gold was not confirmed. So getting into the technicals for silver, I mentioned how this was textbook. Breaking above 29, multiple holds of 29 rallies back up here. And then, boom, you get this nasty down week here where this is going to threaten this support here. And so silver could potentially come down to 28 and come down here. This is going to be significant weekly resistance moving forward. You'll call it 31 and a half. So silver will need to make a weekly close above this level before we can think about getting back to 34, 35. So there is, there is some technical damage now in these charts. Now, getting into the stocks, so this is the daily bar chart, GDX, GDXJ, SILJ. These are the 50-day moving averages. So these are the levels I'm looking at for GDX. I want to point out it traded as low as 36.79, but closed at 37.39, which was fairly close to the high of the day. Yeah, I'm not saying this was like a massive divergence, but nevertheless, I mean, it's, it's a decent divergence, divergence of the miners today, considering the big sell-off in gold. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So these are the levels I'm looking at. Below or, or around 35, you know, in the 34s, there is some support here. Same thing for GDXJ, you know, looking at coming back to this level. You call it 43. I should have put a line in here. You can put another line in here. So that probably comes to around, what is that, 41 or so. So even if the miners come back to these levels and you bounce around for a month or two, this is still a clear uptrend. They're still above these levels. Same thing for SILJ. I mean, a little more technical damage. Maybe this comes back to 1150. But you still have 
these higher lows. And so, again, miners can sell off more, bounce around until September, and there there may not be any significant technical damage. And so we'll we'll monitor what's going on with the ratios. But you know these were super bullish in the last week or so, and yeah, I mean it's it's really too early to say that there's minimal damage here. But just look at these ratios and look how far above the 200-day moving average they are. There's GDX divided by gold, GDXJ divided by gold. So yes, this was I think an 11-month high. This was a 14-month high. I think call it Tuesday. So yeah, these are in new uptrends and. They could sell off some more, but they're in new uptrends. And you're going to see these moving averages start to slope higher and really confirm that they're in new uptrends. We had a nasty reversal in the sector. I don't want to make it out. I don't want to talk about it for another 20 minutes or so. But nasty reversal in the sector. So that means failed breakout in gold. Gold is back in that consolidation. Continue to watch the miners over the next couple weeks and see if they stabilize and buying comes in, even if gold and silver are not the strongest, that would be a good sign. However, if gold and silver struggle over the next couple of weeks, and then you see the miners also really struggle and buying doesn't come in, and they sell off a lot more, that would be uh, a bigger concern. So there it is. Unfortunately, premature bullishness in the last video. But look, when you're in a, a gold consolidation, that tends to happen quite a bit where you get false moves in either direction. So there we have it. Tough way to end the week, but hope you all have a much better weekend. And to leave a comment, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again in the next video.